Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. It's time for a new planet. Uh, yes, this is still Norvis, but it is time for a new planet. Let's have a quick look at the learning to play the game and using the right buttons. Here we go. So for the uh, chem for the biological science, I'm going to need quite a lot of the Vitamelange. Um, it's just used all the way through the processing. You need it for the final uh, for the final step of making actually making the science, and also for a few of the um, the precursor steps as well. So that means I need to go off to a Vitamelange planet. Now I've discovered Tulip, which is pretty good. Uh, if we have a quick look at the map here, you can, this is the one I've, I've been looking at and thinking about for Vitamelange. There's there's loads of it around. There's 30 million, another 10 million, 11, 6, 9 million and so on. There's absolutely loads of it all over the place here. There's also quite a lot of oil, um, more melange, but not really much else. Uh, there's basically only those two things. We've got a tiny patch of iron there, a little patch of coal, and a little, very, a little patch of stone. Oh, and a bit more iron and coal over here. But in general, it's not an enormously promising planet for the point of view of actually finding resources. These iron patches are tiny. That's a tiny, tiny copper patch. So it's, it's a bit rubbish, but it's got enormous quantities of Vitamelange. My alternatives are, let's see, one of these oily planets had some as well. Yeah, this one supposedly has some. If I look, But if I look on the surface, we can see that there is, actually isn't any. There's loads of copper and um, most copper, own some oil as well. It, it, to be fair, it did say it was an oily planet, and a decent patch of uranium and some stone as well. So it's quite good for that sort of thing. But there's absolutely no um, Vitamelange that I can sit, at least as far as I've explored here. And I think, looking at the Universe Explorer, I think that's because somewhere here we go. Vitamelange requires grassy terrain, and this is a frozen planet, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> so I won't be going to um, I won't be going to Trelos. It's also got a 17% threat, which means um, there's occasional biter bases scattered around. Uh, I mean that isn't insurmountable compared to Norvis. That's that's nothing, and I could set up some the, the walls and so on. But it's easier if I don't have to, and Tulip is a nice zero percent threat planet, so I'm, I'm, I think I'm probably going to go there. Um, I had a quick look through basically all of the others, and I think those are the only two that have any possibility of Vitamelange at all. And the, and um, and since Trelos doesn't effectively doesn't, it looks like I'm going to Tulip. So as I say, there's not a great deal of, in the way of resources on Tulip. So I've set up up here. I have set up an, an additional pair of um, delivery cannons here for um, iron and copper because those are things I am I'm going to need, um, and a receiver here that that is on channel 10 I think, um, which I'm going which I'm going to set up for um, for tulip. And then planning a little bit ahead here, I've got this um, I've, I've now got my delivery cannon chest over here ready to accept vitamelange spice, dump it onto this belt where it'll come round here, and be passed into this delivery cannon here where which can send it off to the Norvis orbit so that means I could just go straight to Norvis orbit once I've got the Vitamelange set up up and running and uh, and just yeah just carry straight go straight to the uh, space station rather than having to come back here um, so I've got oh and the other thing I've got is because I'm gonna need uranium for for um, for, for, for nuclear power, I've set up an additional couple of uh, turrets over uh, the delivery cannons over here for uh, 235 and 238 or is it the other way around I can't remember which one's which, um, and the, these are hooked up again to the the, the transmitter that I'm going to put on um, on Tulip when I get there. So that's that's that. Um, I was talking about oh, I should, if I'm going to go to space, and oh, oh no no, actually the stuff that I want for space is all in this rocket, and I've put I put lots and lots of modules in here, so I can send that one up when I'm when I'm ready when I'm up there and ready, and it can come and meet me there, or I could just fly down. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll think about that later. So I've put all of the stuff in here that I hope that I reckon I'm going to need for my uh, new for my new um, excursion for my new base. I've got huge quantities of belts as always. We need loads of those. I never have enough inserters, so I've tried grabbing a few more of them this time. Maybe that's enough. Mm. Uh, I've got a decent number of pipes and some pumps, and oh, I, I could do with more. Um, I don't know. Is that going to be enough? Probably is. I've got some rail. I'm a little torn about that. All the all the stuff for tra um, for communication and um, uh, getting myself home and blank and pad for next time I go there. Delivery cannon stuff. Um, although I, I've, I've got these, but I'm going to be making those out there anyway. Uh, all the stuff I need for a nuclear power station and some accumulators as well, just because. Have I got tanks? Yeah, I've got 50, 50 tanks. Is that enough? It is because I've got another 50 in my inventory. Um, 
rocket parts for getting me home, rocket fuel for getting me home, even though there's loads of oil there so I can possibly get more of that if I need it. Um, and then over here I've got some pump jacks for getting the oil that I mentioned. I've got the um, industrial furnaces that I'm going to need to roast the vitamelange. And I've got just some random other junk in my moment. Oh, and some train bits as well so I can set up a railway system over there because that was quite handy on... Um, on the uh, whichever planet it was where I set it up. So I'd, I'd quite like to be able to do that again. Um, so I'm hopeful that that's going to be everything I need. Um, and if not, then I might be able to build more of it. I might, I'm just going to nip off and get some more um, railway actually, because I'm a bit iffy about whether I've got enough of that. And some construction bots and logistics bots would be useful as well. Let's see if we can find some of them. Apparently I can't. I'm going to have to pull them out of um, uh, robot ports. Okay, it's a hundred of each, and my inventory is starting to look very, very full. But I think that's everything I need. So my plan for this episode is to head over to uh, to Tulip and get the base, essentially get the base set up over there. Tulip anywhere? So look at this. Uh, launch trigger, do it manually. Going to Tulip, good. Land anywhere? There aren't because there aren't any landing pads there, so it's going to be a crash landing. There's no choice about that. We'll just have to go and hope for the best. Around there. It's a fairly fairly full rocket. Let's go. So my plan for this episode is to uh, pretty, essentially uh, show it all of my setting up of this new base. And so I'm going to do it through, through a, a series of vignettes, if you like. I'm going to have flying over there first. Pull those bots bringing stuff. Flying over there, and then. We'll see where I've landed and I'll have a quick think about it and then I'll stop the recording because there's no point in having you watching me going around just picking up all the little bits of junk that have landed here. Um, and then I'll come back once I've done something something vaguely useful. Okay, so I'm here. That's right in the middle of all these massive vitamelange patches, so that's great. It's reasonably close to a decent coal patch and a decent stone patch. That's good too. There's some iron down here. I might as well grab that, save the amount that I'm chipping over from Norvis. And then the bigger iron and coal patches are over there. Um, I can and I can so I can probably build a yeah, I'll probably make a train route that comes from here, down here, across here, and then start building up my main base in this sort of space here. Because there's a de decent amount of space here. It's fairly close to where I've landed. And we can then we can get to do things like getting the oil from here. We need water for power, and um, and it's close to all of these supplies. And there's even more coal up there. That's handy. So I can get yeah I can get all of this set up and uh, and, and running. Okay, I shall get on with that, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Well, a few seconds for you, maybe an hour or two for me. We'll see how it goes. Right, back again, and so far I've got as far as setting up the. Um, Setting up the nuclear power plant here, uh, I've got a few gaps in here. I think these were some of the turbines that didn't quite make it all the way to this planet. Um, unfortunately, there's this sort of bootstrapping issue I've uh, just 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 realised I'm going to have because this whilst this is warming up nicely, because I've just chucked a little bit of fuel in it, made from some uranium I had with me, um, so I've got, I had 10 fuel cells. Um, the pumps over here won't be working because they need electricity, so I'm going to have to head back over and down here where I set up my initial part of my bootstrapping. Down here we have these these burner generators here, which, uh, and if I can find some fuel for those, here we go, here's some fuel. If I just chuck some of that in, uh, that should be enough to kick, kick started. There we go, I've got a little bit of electricity now. And so hopefully let's skim back over here and make sure that's got it running. So it's this, yeah, there we go. We've got water in here now. So once this gets up to temperature, this will heat up. There we go. It's got 42 degrees so far, <clears throat> which is doing better than. Oh no, they're all actually it's heating them all up. Um, I suppose that's possibly a good thing. So these will start. These will then heat up. Once these get to about 500 degrees C, then they'll start kicking out proper amounts of electricity. I've also, while I was waiting for the bots, so yeah, what I what I did here was I slapped down some robo ports here. This is where I um, crash landed. So all of the all of the stuff I brought with me ended up in a big pile here. So I set up all of this to um, all of this and the and the uh, the uh, construction bots in the in these uh, bot farms, and I made a couple more of the burner turbine generators. So that gathered up all of the stuff I dumped there, and then dropped the blueprint here. The bots came over and built that up for me. 
all very nice of them. And then I built up this railway line that goes across here, so up to where the iron and the coal patches are. And it's also fairly close to the um, vitamilange patches as well. So I now need to have a little bit of a think about where I want to set up my um, things like the, the LTN depot. That'll probably go in about here or maybe just over here. Um, oh, there's a stone patch there as well, so that's, that's, that's useful. Um, and then where I'm going to put all of the construction. So I may well just go along here, I think, because that's going to give me room to have a few stations in here for unloading. Maybe get some oil from this patch as well. Um, stations below as well, if necessary. And then I can sort of expand off this way. But this is another somewhat swampy planet I've I, I've discovered after, after I, I landed and realised I couldn't just slap stuff down wherever I wanted. So maybe I'm actually going to be better off going over here somewhere and then training the Vitamilange from over here back in over this way. And this, this area looks a bit drier, um, which means I'm not going to need as much landfill. Or I could just build along here, because to be honest it's not going to take up that much space. Um, one thing I did realise is I've only got one of these, these um, delivery cannon chests. I, for a moment I thought I didn't have any of them and then I discovered it was buried in, in my inventory or in one of the... Uh, yeah, somewhere in my inventory and I just couldn't find it because I'm blind. So I set, I've got, got that set up now. Um, but... So I sort of want to have the rest of it relatively close to that. So if I start bringing in copper and iron by delivery cannon, it'll drop in here. Um, or I could work on making another one and putting it somewhere else. It's a bit tricky. I think I think I'm probably best just going to be best off just keeping everything in this sort of this area. So let's have a look. If I go to where have I where have I also been building stuff? Um, this is probably the best place to look. So I've got yeah I've got oil. This one's do is doing oil, from oil, which is quite nice. So if I copy all the way across to here again, like I did last time, then I'm yeah I'm probably going to have to go in and make some tweaks and things. But at least. At least this way I can get a, most of what I'm going to need. So if I do that... I'm back on this planet. How big is that? Okay, so that's a that is a significant part of what I'm going to need. So... Why is it going red sometimes? So, okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, so I could put, if I put that in there like that, then I can put in... That's reasonably close. Yeah, so... Supply directions, it's a bit funny. I can put this in probably somewhere around here. So I'll have a bit more of a think about that. Get this in place and get the get the uh, the bots building it up, getting getting it ready. And then um, we'll come back and see where we go from there. So as I said, this is a good place for the, for the vitamin land. There's loads of it around. There's a bit of coal up here as well. I'll get the mine set up and get all of that flooding in. Now that I've got, hopefully now that I've got power. Have we got power? 80. Why is this only 95 degrees? Okay, it's just it's just eating up a bit slowly. Okay, uh, this one's at 100. Yeah. Okay, so I'll leave that running. I'll get some power going and get things up and working. Now I did realise I've made a bit of a mistake back on Norvis. If we have a look over here, I forgot to put any of the um, delivery cannon capsules in here, which is a bit of a pain. Um, so I temporarily re re redirected this one to fire at um, at my at my new new uh, new site. So that's good. That's good. That'll tide me over for now. But yeah, I felt a bit silly about that. Um, but yeah, things are starting to things are starting to go. I'm making progress. I've got nearly got power, and I've got the base. I've got the, sort of the basic backbone of railway line set up. So time to get some more done. And some more time has passed. The bots have been very busy. They've been building up all of this area for me. Um, so we've got the power power plant down here that's ticking over happily. Then up here we've got the um, the railway stations that will eventually be dropping off all of the stuff I need. Uh, something's gone a bit wrong down here. My copy and pasting has obviously had some some issues, should we say? So I'm going to need to do some tidying up. But things are gradually being built up around here. This probably looks very very familiar compared to uh, what I had on um, uh, Henkisu's ship, ship, dip, dip, the Holmanite planet, um, because it is. It's, it's a direct copy and paste. So we've got exactly the same um, smelting hit down here for the copper, up here for iron and steel, and okay these belts are going the wrong way at the moment but basically I've, I've, I've gone in and done a little bit of the tidying up so things are sort of being fed in the right direction this one is going to start being where the vitamilange comes in We've got stone coming in here and copper coming in here and so on so the, it's all and coal as well so it's all going to be running on almost exactly the same way as it did on the previous planet 
I've also copied in a big chunk across here. This is the uh, the process that builds up all of the delivery cannon capsules. It's the other way up this time, just because that seemed to be a way to fit it in quite nicely into the area I had available. And I've put in my, um, uh, what do you call it, for the um, LTN, the LTN depot up here as well. So that's, again, direct copy and paste. And I've also put in some mines now. I've got to get started on these things. So we've got a, a coal mine over here. And as you can see, this has started running. We've got boxes full of coal over here, ready for a train. And up here, the same with iron. Um, I've had to use wooden boxes here because, ironically, for the iron mine, I didn't have any iron available. And apparently, I've dropped an, a, a blueprint on the ground there. I'm not sure how I did that. But once I've got this iron flowing, I can, I, can, I can go in and make some iron or some steel chests and go in and replace all of these with the proper ones. So there's decent amounts of space in there. Um, oh, I'm missing some of the combinators, that could be a bit of a problem. And I'm missing a bit of rail there because apparently I wasn't standing in the right place. So, yeah, you know, never mind. I also didn't have any enough, I didn't bring any signals with me. So I had like five in my inventory which I placed down fairly quickly. And then the rest of it, they're all just ghosts. So I might need to make some of those and go out and do those by hand. Oh, I need to make a stone mine, I haven't done that yet. I uh, made a big Vitamalange mine here. There is a blueprint in here for the station, but that hasn't been built yet and hasn't been, and this hasn't been linked up yet because I ran out of belts, so I needed to nip off and get some more of those before I finish that, finish this bit off. But at the moment, I'm just kind of waiting for the uh, the bots to sort themselves out. There doesn't seem to be any power getting around to this robot port here, so maybe if I put in a yeah, so I'm putting a an extra pile on there. That'll get, that'll get the power fed across, and then this one will this one will power up, and then this whole section here will get will become in the Roboport catchment area and it'll start start getting built. I'm a little bit short of Roboports. I'm sort of thinking maybe I should remove some of these ones down here and move all of this stuff up to some chests up here. But there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in these chests now. Um, some of it is is the resources that I dropped off that I need to use and some of it is other sort of just junk that I've picked up like the 2.3 thousand wood that I've picked up in the clearing out the forests in order to make space for building. But otherwise, it's yeah, it's going quite well. I think uh, we have most of the resources we need. There's there seems to be a shortage of tanks up here for the oil to be dropped off in. That's a bit of a shame, and that means I'm going to have a shortage of tanks over here. I obviously used up more than more than I should have, or more than I had enough for putting all of this together. But this is now working quite nicely. I I dumped the um, the ten uranium fuel cells I had into the basically into all four of them to get the heat out fairly quickly, to get everything to warm up, and now I've got. I've got 500,000 steam, so that's going to keep me going for at least for a while, as it because you can see it's only dribbling out very gently through these um, through these turbines. In fact, if I look at the production graph, no, it doesn't show steam on. Here we go. I'm using two point. I'm using 32,000 steam per minute apparently. Uh, so that actually that 500 500,000 is only going to last me about 15 minutes. So I'm. Probably going to need to get some more uranium being brought in, but I've got this. I've got this thing here now, so that I can um, I can use that to, to drop it into. Okay, things are going quite well. Time to carry on, I think. And here we go. I've made some more progress. Um, so I've still got all the stations here running, as you as you can see, and they're unloading nicely. I've got them all LTN'd up now, and I've finally built enough of the um, enough of the stations. And as you can see up here, I've thrown in this machine here that's building green circuits because I discovered there's quite a lot of stuff I'd forgotten. Uh, top of the list was probably signals, they were rather important, um, and LTN stations, so I've been going around making loads of those. I also hadn't brought any uh, steel, so I've been making wooden chests to put in these stations, but I've just up finished upgrading the stations here to steel ones. As you can see, I've got LTN trains running here. So there's one here that's just brought in some iron, and I've got the uh, the other two sitting in my depot. There's um, That shouldn't be called copper, that should be called vitamelange. go and so all of those things are being dropped off in the station here so we've got the coal the, the copper is coming through from elsewhere we've got stone we've got the vitamin lounge we've got the iron ore and up here well I didn't bring enough um, tanks either so all, all of my tanks went into the uh, nuclear power plant so I need a few more up here it seems um, so I need to make a couple more of those but I've got now I've got a nice steady supply of iron and steel I also did discover I ran out of um, electric furnaces while I was putting this together so it's a big gap along here which kind of sucks uh, but on the flip side I'm not using that much steel so this is probably going to be more than enough anyway copper is being brought over by delivery cannon because I don't, there's not very much copper on this planet at all I've got 
this set up in the usual way with um, the negative numbers on there and um, to tell this uh, they're being transmitted by the transmitter and then the delivery cannons back on Norvis sending, sending the stuff over. So that's exactly exactly as normal um, and that's, that's working quite well as you can see this is staying filled up with copper and as soon as that ticks below 500 like so we should get another delivery cannon capsule coming over any moment now. I haven't actually got the um, the d -d 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 -d, what do you call it? It's the two types of uranium on the delivery cannon system yet. I've, I've been doing that manually um, because I'm still using. There we go. There's more copper. I've still I'm still using the um, the delivery cannon that was actually supposed to be going to orbit frost somewhere else. Anyway, I can't remember. Um, but there is enough uranium now that this is all absolutely fine. These two. Um, reactors seem to be turned on and that's keeping these yeah these tanks are absolutely full now so there's clearly a bit more being produced than ideal I should probably put some more tanks on here just to catch the overflow and stop it being wasted but yeah no uh, that can always wait I also realized I completely forgot to bring oil refineries so that kind of sucks I'm gonna need some more of them um, I'm gonna need to make some of them rather I'm hoping they're not too difficult let's have a no, there's nothing exotic in there. It's just a lot of lot of bits and pieces. So it's going to take a little while, but I can pocket craft those without too much effort. Um, the rest of it, what else have I got? There's a couple of purples in here. Oh, another couple of um, I, uh, electric furnaces. So I'll pull up these steel ones that aren't actually doing anything. In fact, let's do that now. Get rid of those because they they won't. They can't. They can't work because there isn't. There isn't any iron being fed into them from the turn to steel. So those will be taken away, and some of them will be put over there. Okay, so that's that sorted. Um, the boilers and the refineries I'm gonna, and the tanks I'm going to have to actually just make because I didn't think to bring any of those with me because fail. But everything else, I've now got these big, massive mining setups set up. I, I decided on this Vitamelange patch because it's 30 million, so I'll probably never have to come back to this planet. Um, but there's more of them around I can use if I need to. I might set up a um, an oil an oil mine somewhere, maybe up there or over here, somewhere, some, some or over. Actually, this one's quite easy to get to because it's just I just need to extend this over this way a little bit. So I might go for that. Got the iron and coal mines. I would set up a stone mine, but I ran out of um, mining drills, so that's not not ideal. But to be honest, but at this point, yeah, there's a few that have run out. If I go around and harvest the ones that have, have run out, I'll probably be able to finish this off and get it and just get the, get that entire stone patch, which isn't enormous, but it'll it'll keep me going for a little while. Down here, um, I've run into the issue that there's a bit of a bit of swamp in this area, as I was discussing earlier. So this might not have been the best area to build, but it was convenient for where I, I, I'd thought I'd put in these stations and all the other stuff. So it it kind of made sense. And I've got these machines here building up some landfill, and we've got up to yeah, we've got up just over 100 now, and that's probably going to be enough to fill this area in. I'll go over and splat it in a bit. Myokin is still getting beaten up by asteroids. That's getting kind of annoying now. Let's have a, a look and see how bad that's getting. Because I keep getting warnings about Myokin. Um, yeah, there's some, there's we get basically just getting more and more holes in the um, in the solar arrays, which is not ideal. I do kind of need to get some more solar up here, and perhaps some try and set up some kind of system to to maintain the uh, to, to set up some sort of asteroid defense. That that's something that could be worth doing, and just just to stop all this random damage that's happening up here. It's a, Bit. It's a bit frustrating, um, but that's not 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 high on my list at the moment. This getting this up and running is is top of my list. So running along here, this is mostly in place. As I said, there's a bit there's a few gaps and things because of bits of water that need to be dealt with, uh, particularly over here. I think yeah, there's a pond in there, so I can't get the coal through, and it's stopping that pipe being placed and so on. So there's, there's little bits and pieces like that that uh, that need to be fixed. I'm going to need a supply of water from somewhere, which I haven't actually set up yet. But there's there's water everywhere, as I've just complained about, so that's not going to be difficult. Um, I haven't started processing the Vitamelange yet. We've got it being brought to a station, but that's as far as I've got so far. So I'll need to pull that out of here, and then either have it being processed down here in this space, or maybe bring a belt all the way across here and get that set up. I'm also not feeding the iron and steel and stone. Actually, no, I am feeding the stone on. It's just all getting swallowed up by landfill onto the um, onto the bus here yet because I'm not quite certain where it goes. And I want to make sure I get that right. Um, 
have I got this wrong? No, no, that's right. Okay, that's that's good. So the, the copper is going through properly at the moment. I just need to fill in all the other all, all the other gaps and get that going. So I'll get on with that. Back in MO. Right, and a quick update. I don't know if you saw that while it was just running there, but yes, there we go. I've got the um, the delivery can capsule machine running now. So that means all of can can has map mode. There we go. That means all of this stuff along here that you can't really see because it's night is now working. Uh, we've got the the inputs being fed in. We've got the coal, coal copper, stone. Um, iron and oil, iron ore and oil being fed in. I've realised I don't actually use the iron anywhere, so um, but that's been invaluable for making up a lot of the machines I've, um, I've forgotten to bring with me and such such like. So we're feeding in the inputs here. The oil is being turned into um, into uh, petroleum gas, we're making sulphur and plastic, we're making sand to make glass, the glass and the copper and steel and plastic are making the low density structures, we're making explosives from the sulphur and the coal, um, Bricks, blah blah blah, to um, load to what, what are these things? Heat shield uh, tiles and some copper wire. All of that's being fed along here into this machine, and we're now making the uh, and now we're, we're now making the uh, delivery cannon capsules. The limiting factor seems to be the low density circuits, uh, low, de low density structures. That's to be honest, always the case. All of my bases everywhere, low density structures are just slow to make, but it doesn't. I don't think it really matters because by the time we've actually got the Vitamelange processing up and running, um, we're going to have quite a big backlog of them anyway because there's two mach there's one machine running down here making them. Interesting. Let's make that two. Uh, there's two machines down here running along ma making them happily. So it's probably going to be able to keep up and I don't think we're going to be firing Vitamelange out that fast so I think this is probably going to be okay. But as you can see, this belt doesn't actually come from anywhere, so there's a bit more work to be done yet. Let's carry on with that and uh, see how it goes. And now I think we have the final part of this episode. Uh, what are we getting delivered now? Probably more Vulcanite. So as you can see down here, we've got the um, this delivery chest being a little bit busier now. We've got um, Vulcanite being brought in as well from, uh, from Norvis, and I had to adapt things a little bit for that. Um, I realised that I didn't actually need this one to be bringing iron over, so I've adapted that to be now this, this delivery cannon's bringing Vulcanite. So that's dropping in here, going down this belt. And the reason I need that is because over here, it's fed, fed all the way along this belt here, up here. Because <laughs> I've done the, uh, I've now done the um, Vitamelange processing, and this was actually pretty straight. This is, uh, no, this is very straightforward. It was ab absolutely trivial. The only thing that made it remotely complicated was having to bring in the, um, um, the, the vulcanite here. So what we've got is it comes at the, the Vitamelange ore comes in. It's ground up in the pulverizers here. Fed round here is the chunks. It goes into these these um, industrial furnaces to be roasted. Now these are slightly different, unusual in that the the recipe for that is. Um, 100 input, 100 on the input and you get 50 on the output rather than being sort of 2 to 1 or something like that. And that's presumably so to make it so it doesn't use up too much Vulcanite, which, um, yeah, I can I can understand. I can support that. That makes makes sense. Uh, a, a small amount of Vulcanite should be able to roast quite a lot of the uh, melange. So that's then passed through here. It comes out here as the, the ro ro uh, Vita Melange roast. This one turns it into the Vita Melange smoothies, um, or spices they're actually known. Round here to the delivery cannon over here, which fires it off back to Norvis, where it's dropping in here into this this chest. There's a slight problem here. I've had to set this to not to be only 200 of it um, because yeah, the um, the chest is really really full of ice, and that's because I left something firing away without a limit on it by mistake, and so the chest absolutely filled up. It overflowed a bit. I had to do a bit of tidying up, but now it's all sort of it's all sort of reasonably organised except. There's not a huge buffer of Vitamelange, but I don't think that matters because 200 is probably enough. As soon as it drops below there, we'll get another capsule coming in and we can start passing it around here. So that's then getting passed around here, down to this delivery cannon here, which will at some point start firing at, um, at Norvis Orbit, because that's where I'm going to actually need it. And dropping it into this chest here. Um, and hopefully I've got this set up where is the this one set up? So yeah, when that's less than zero, it'll start firing. So if I turn this on now, it presumably yeah, it's not actually doing anything at the moment. That's as I'd expect. Because if I go, if I now need to go up to Norvis orbit and say that up here, we would like to also have some Vitamelange spice. That's full Vitamelange spice. Here we go. Put it in here. That one. 
And we'd like to have, I don't know, let's say 200 here as well. So the cannon down on um, on Norvis should immediately start loading up and getting ready to fire. And in a moment, we'll see the delivery cannon ca capsule flying in here. I hope. Yes, there we go. Boom. And there we've got the... Uh, the vitamin Melange Spice up here, so that's being un unloaded by the bots, as always, ha as always happens up here, because we don't want to accumulate too much stuff in here, just in case. And so, yeah, that should now, that's now now working. I've got my spice flowing, um, <laughs> the spice must flow, from here on um, on Tulip. Uh, we're doing the crushing, roasting, and as you can see, all these machines are kicked in now, nicely now, so we're just, uh, the, pro the process is running, and... Um, yeah, it's getting passed over to this delivery cannon. We've got just about enough being passed through here to keep up with it. Maybe I should put another set of these of these in. Um, I don't know. I mean, once we get, I think I will. Just actually, no, I don't. I don't think I need to. It's going, but basically, there's there's more or less a full belt coming around here. I think that's probably as fast as this is going to run, unless I start putting more machines in over here as well, and perhaps more belts. So I think this is okay. And after a few more shots, we'll probably find that both ends, both on Norvis and in Norvis orbit, have got enough of this that this machine will then just go back to sleep. And the entire base can sort of, this entire sort of facility on this planet can sort of kind of shut down again. Um, because it's now, we've got, got all of the stuff, we, we've got all of the stuff we need from this planet. It, it's, now, it's now flowing. I've also been around and done a little bit of tidying up. I've put in, uh, I've made sure that there's enough miners here. I put in a few extra signals where they were missing, that sort of thing. Um, I wonder how much... So that's obviously still at 30 million because we've hardly touched it. The stone is at 368,000, 3.9 million, 300,000 on the iron. I'm slightly worried about this iron patch. Um, I think if this base runs out of something, it's going to be it's going to be the iron ore from from hit from this patch, um, or possibly no. The oil's probably going to be okay for a while, so I may need to rethink this. Perhaps do a bit more exploration, see if I can find another iron patch, sort of somewhere not too far away. But I think I'll leave that for now, and it gives me an excuse to come back here later and sort of sort things out. There are a few other things that need um, fixing, like the uh, new, the import of uranium here is still broken um, because we don't have the cannons firing to the right place from Norvis because I forgot to put the delivery cannon capsules in, in there so that's something I can fix easily when I go back there. Um, we're not reprocessing the um, spent nuclear fuel which is a bit of a shame I should probably um, come back and we, I, I need to go around all the planets again with the centrifuge because I, for, I keep forgetting that and that's what you need to reprocess the nuclear fuel. That said um, if I look over here again there's not all that much in here. We've got 38, and it'll fill up to 4,800 probably before it's um, before it stops working. And that's going to be a very, very long time. It's the it's the the, the, the standard thing with with nuclear waste. It'll it's it's difficult to get rid of, but it's not particularly big, and you can keep it. You can keep an enormous amount of it in a relatively small area. I put in some accumulators as well to give a bit of battery backup power. Um, I don't think it's vital, but it does mean I can let these go down a bit lower. These will drop all the way down to I think 10,000 now before the before the, these kick back in again. In fact, that probably should be lower. Let me just check. I'm gonna set it to 100,000. No, let's let's set that to 10,000 steam. Copy it to all of these. Right, so that'll that'll will let the amount of steam in these tanks drop all the way down to 10. 10,000 in total across the whole lot before these kick back in again. And my hope is that during that time, these accumulators will keep the base running without any problems, and I, I won't need to worry about it. Maybe that should be slightly. Maybe I should have left that at 100,000. 100,000 is still pretty low. Yeah, let's let's do that. Nuclear fuel is cheap. I might as well uh, risk wasting a little bit of it. There we go. 100,000. Oh, it's got and, it's, and night has fallen, so it's got dark again. <laughs> that, I think we have quite short days on this planet. Um, what does it say? So, tulip. Uh, solar's not great. Day-night cycle is four and a half, four point four minutes twenty, four point two two minutes, or four minutes twenty two seconds. Either way, that's not very long compared to Norvis, the, sort of the standard. Oh, it's, it's more than half the day on Norvis, but um, yeah, it's it's still it's it's a, it's a bit quick and. Um, it means it goes dark rather easily when I'm trying to record a, record a video and you can't see what I'm talking about. 
But I think that's going to be it for this episode. Um, I'm pretty much done here on, on my tulip. I think I might do a little bit of tidying up, perhaps get the bots to bring all of this stuff up here somewhere, and then I'll take a lot of the stuff that is just a bit pointless and shove it in this rocket and fly it back to Norvis. So there's going to be quite a lot of scrap, there's going to be some spare um, rocket parts, there's going to be other stuff that I just don't really need on this planet. I have put some repair packs into one of the other um, uh, robot ports, so we've got some of those up here. But now the rest of this, we don't need the wood, so that's, that's completely useless on this planet. I don't, I'd, I'll probably just leave it here though. The stone I'll put into the into the uh, train system because that's something I'm slightly worried, and the coal as well. That, yeah, that could be a use there. I might as well take a lot of the rest of this stuff back with me because it's going to be mildly useful somewhere else. I'll leave some spares behind though, so if there's any sort of damage is done to the um, to the place by meteorites, then I'll I can, I can, it can get fixed up. But a lot of this, I think, I'm just going to ship back with me, um, and that'll mean I can pull up some of these extraneous robot parts down here. Someone did suggest actually, and it was unfortunately slightly too late because I'd already I'd already come here. That a better, perhaps a better way to do this. It's, it's going to be a bit more expensive in um, in resources, but what I could do is I could fly out in a first rocket with just a landing pad and a few other little bits and pieces in the, in the rocket, so it's mostly empty, and then fly around on the surface of the planet until I find exactly where I want to set up my base. Because I mean, if, if I'd had that, I might have well have set up my factory over here, where there's a bit more space and a bit less swamp, um, and that would have been slightly better, but because I was sort of pinned here by having all of my stuff here, I didn't really want to do that. So if you do that, if you fly out with very little stuff, just a landing pad, fly off to find where you want to put your base, and then put another rocket, and then put the landing pad down there, and have a second rocket come out that has all of the stuff in it that you want to have to build up your base. Then you have a bit more control over where it ends up because it will come down on the landing pad, and you also don't risk losing stuff to having the um, the the um, your ship crash land. So there's a bit of an advantage to that. But on the on the flip side, it uses an extra rocket, so it's a bit more expensive for that sort of reason. And it does mean you can also use it in the future if if I, if I re when I realised I forgotten the um the these things the uh, uh oil refineries i could have used that to, to bring up bring, uh, i could have brought out some more in another rocket but then at that point you're looking at three rockets for setting up a, a, a base on a planet instead of just one and it's all a bit it's, it's a bit much i do also have just noticed that i haven't built these um coal liquefaction plants up yet and i've also just realized that i didn't bring any he heavy oil with me so i can't bootstrap these i'll have to s switch one of these over to doing um doing the three three stage um oil processing in order just to just get the the heavy oil to bootstrap these so i'll do that before i go in fact i might as well do that now um have i got the resources to make a couple of these no i haven't i've not got enough stone bricks or iron I mean, these are things I have, so it's not too much of a problem. Um, in fact, they're just up here is where I was making the, all the sort of stuff I'd forgotten. Uh, so that'll let me make one. The problem with these is they take ages to make with pocket crafting. You can see how the speed this is going down. So I'll, um, I'll fast forward this a little bit for you guys, and I'll be back in a mo. Right, and while that's building, I shall switch this over to do the other type of processing. I want I want lots of heavy oil, so let's do that one. And we'll let this fill up. That's fine. Uh, we'll just leave that running for a moment. Dump it all into this tank. And now, when I put one of these down, when it builds, there we go. I should now hopefully have all the stuff I need. Yes, I've got all the inputs I need. And that bell just turned off there because there is enough um, enough light, enough petroleum gas for it to for it to run. So I don't feel that I need to leave this machine running, but I did want to get enough um, heavy oil in that I could just trigger it once and get the get the machine running all by itself um, with the sort of the the loop going that I've discussed before. And this is in case the oil runs out, basically, so that then the then the base can start running off coal instead. Okay, that's done. And as you can see, it's now we're uh, now got the coal liquefaction running here. We'll just produce, we'll let that run just until it exhausts the uh, coal supply it's got out here on this on this part of the belt. Because yeah, why not? Um, and that can now, once this finishes running a couple more times, <laughs> uh, this will be the last one. And then we'll have we'll have that little bit of little bit of heavy oil, a little bit of light oil, um, but not and, and then plenty of petroleum gas because that's what's being produced from from the oil. So good, that's now done. 
So I'm going to call the episode here. That's um, everything I need. Everything I need to show off. I think um, the next episode I shall be back up in the in the space station working on the biological science. I imagine. So uh, say goodbye to Tulip, everyone, and I'll uh, see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.